you know, it's always said this is the most important election in our history. Well, it's pretty close to it. And I would say to our friends who are watching us today, vote as if your life depends on it because of life. Are we going to survive this? I don't know. Is anyone seriously buying this crap? None of us expect the media to critically cover the Democrats and hold them accountable, but they've gotten even more extreme by acting as a real Ministry of Information for the Biden regime. It's unreal. They are so desperate to retain power that they're actually out there telling people that they're going to die and the country is over unless Democrats retain power, I guess permanently. They've gone full Orwellian, even redefining words now to protect the Democrats, like women, racism, vaccine, most recently raid and recession. I think right now we're going to focus on the 2022 election. We want to retake the House. We definitely want to retake the United States Senate. And I think in doing that, and our goal is, is to focus on what's going on right now with the American people. We're going to focus on the fact that inflation is still over eight and a half percent. We're still talking about GDP, which has been going down and as you know, uh, sharing breakfast with the chair, the former chairman of the, uh, of the Federal Reserve, anytime you've got two quarters in a row, you are in a recession. We want to see us get out of that recession. These are not good policies to run on for Democrats. We need to focus on that. Uh, and as we get past that and get into the 2024, I think the Republican will be well positioned. But uh, let's get past the 2022 election first. And we're not in a recession yet, but uh, we'll wait and see what does happen. And we really want to thank you. It's very good that you came on two, today. Two Senator quarters Rouse. tell you differently than that. Not, uh, that that's out <laughs> of right, date. Thanks. Out of date. You got that, peasant? Recessions are different when Democrats do it. And just look at the shit-eating grin on this guy's face. What are you smiling at? She's just changing the rules because she can and shoving it in your face, and you're smiling like an idiot. Yes, that thing that everybody knew was two quarters of negative GDP growth now has to be redefined. Because if they don't, then they might end up having to report critically on Democrats and their policies. So now, they're all just going to agree with each other that it's different when they receive. Session. We're gonna get right back into these clips, but first check out this free coin offer from Noble Gold. Wow guys, check this out. Noble Gold, one of the sponsors of our show, has just been picked by Consumer Affairs, the rating agency, as the overall number one gold IRA company in the US. Talk to the team today if you're thinking of precious metals. And if you're quick, they're giving away an incredible one-tenth ounce American Eagle gold-proof coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team now at 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit Noble Gold investments.com well positioned but uh let's get past the 2022 election first and we're not in a recession yet but uh, we'll wait and see what does happen two, and two quarters around. tell you differently than that not uh, that that's out <laughs> of right, date thanks out of date this term comes from the official language of the party Newspeak. It's technically just short in English, but it's entirely designed to control the use of words that may be threatening to the party. Simplistic terms like duck speak, crime think, black white. By limiting language to small bits, it makes debate controllable or refutable. Insoc simply has a monopoly on political discourse because it made the words up. Speaking of Orwellian, there was actually a really interesting exchange on the Sunday shows between KJP and John Carl, a guy who is normally a regime mouthpiece actually calling out Biden and Democrats for their Orwellian titled Inflation Reduction Act. But, but let me ask you, it's, it's called the Inflation Reduction Act. But the Congressional Budget Act uh, uh, Office, which is nonpartisan, said that there would be a negligible impact on inflation this year and barely impact inflation at all uh, next year. I mean, isn't it almost Orwellian? How can you call it inflation reduction? Act? He's in, boys! He did it! He said it! I mean, isn't it almost Orwellian? How can you call it inflation reduction no. act when the nonpartisan experts say it's not going to... So I appreciate that. I appreciate the question. We've actually addressed this, the, the CBO. It was the top line number. There's more in there that shows uh, that it will have the money uh, from... Remember how we're doing this, too. It's it's making sure that billionaires uh, in corporate America are, pairing, are paying their fair share, making sure that, it's, that the tax code is a little bit more fair. And so when you do that, when you put it in its totality, you you will see that it will it will bring down, lower the deficit, will, which will help fight inflation. Look, she is just so bad at this. 
And it's irritating because she acts like she's fooling somebody. Isn't it interesting that they've been telling us all that the inflation is no big deal? Yet now we need a bill to reduce it. Also, notice how she just flops around on the nonpartisan CBO estimate. She acts like these people didn't take everything she's saying into account. And of course, Carl doesn't push back. I guess we can't expect too much of these people. And I don't know, it seems like it might have been a good idea to ask these questions before it was passed and made law. Lastly, it's been nauseating watching the Democrats and the media fawn over Liz Cheney, right? I keep thinking about the, the scene in Star Wars, uh episode four, when Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi are battling it out on the Death Star, and Obi-Wan says to Darth Vader, if you strike me down, I will come back more powerful than you can imagine. And to me, Liz Cheney is, is, is Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, 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 no. Cheney, a Republican profile in Courage after the Capitol attack. And uh, Ed says a lot, of, a lot of politicians through the years have loved Quoting Winston Churchill, very few actually show Churchillian courage. We've certainly seen that with Zelensky uh, in Ukraine. Oh my God. Al Franken basically just secured her victory by endorsing her, which he predicted would be supported by the Republicans. Now, obviously, the only reason they're doing this is because she's going after Trump and other Republicans. The media loves conservatives that attack their own side. No such counterpart on the Democrat side of the media either. But it wasn't long ago that the media hated Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney is truly one of the most odious presences in American politics today. Liz Cheney does not just argue her point of view, she boils up a stew of the most repugnant, factless, fear-mongering propaganda to rile up the darkest forces of the far political fringe. Now, whatever you think about her father, you gotta allow Dick Cheney this. He came about his infamy honestly. He is a real up-by-the-bootstraps kind of villain. But Liz Cheney is the knockoff version. She's a legacy case, a toxic example of what affirmative action for overprivileged white people looks like. All right, folks, that's all I got for that one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Make sure to leave a comment to let us all know what you think and make sure to subscribe on your way out. See you next time.